Good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 12th day of November, and we are gone through the second week of November already. we got a couple more days and then going to the third week. Wow, it's a year sure flying by. Um, praise the Lord uh, for these devotionals, and uh, first I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and hope and pray that He's your Lord and Savior today. And today's title for the devotional is titled Garbage Collectors. And before we get into that, I'm going to sing today's scripture song. And today's scripture song is from uh, 1 Samuel 16, 7. So press play here and sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Amen. <clears throat> Another 1 Samuel 16, scripture 7. song here. But the Lord, Lord said unto Samuel, Samuel look, look not, not on, on his countenance, countenance or, or on, on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Right. <clears throat> but the Lord said unto Samuel, On his countenance, or on the height of his stature, as I have refused him for the Lord. See it not as man see it. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Not as man See it, the Lord looketh on the heart. The Lord seeth not as man seeth, for the Lord looketh on the heart. The Lord seeth not as man seeth, but the Lord looketh on the heart. That's right, sure does. All right, good scripture song there. Amen. Put that back to the beginning and do that again towards the end of the broadcast. Amen. All right, now we'll get into today's topic for this 12th day of November, titled Garbage Collectors. And it says here in Colossians 3.23, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, as to the Lord, and not unto men. Colossians 3.23 And today's uh, author is R.C. That would be the initials for... I think that is Rex Cobb. Let me make sure there. Yep, that would be Rex Cobb. And he's um, uh, Bi Baptist Bible Translators in Bowie, Texas. So let me read you what he wrote here on this topic of garbage collectors. <clears throat> All right, he says here, when I was a child, I wanted to be a cowboy. Other boys wanted to be policemen, firemen, or soldiers. I don't remember any kid that aspired to be a garbage man, but where would we be without the men who every week take away the worthless trash from our homes, right? Where would we be without those men to do that? Uh, let the uh, sanitation workers go on. Uh, let the sanita sanitation workers go on strike, and very soon the entire population is begging them to return to work. Uh, these dedicated men don't receive the recognition and esteem they deserve. Uh, you probably don't even know the name of the man who drives the truck, or the one who jumps off and dumps your trash in the truck, even without any display of appreciation they do their job mm. and so do we not give appreciation to those men as we probably don't give appreciation to many people that do those things um, so continue I says the key word in our text is do and we need to do something to earn a living hopefully that work is honoring to God if we have the attitude that we are uh, doing it as unto God, we will probably perform it or perform a lot better. Now, let us apply the principle to our job as 
uh, Christians. Uh, do you, you do have one, you know, a job. God, ca uh, God calls those jobs gifts. Are you faithfully at work? Uh, no doubt the preacher, teacher, and singer may get more recognition than the giver, the greeter, or prayer warrior. However, where uh, would God's work be without the faithful, behind-the-scenes workers, right? Where would... Uh, so... Where uh, where would God's work be without the faithful behind the scene workers? You are not unimportant, right? Do you uh, think no one notices? God does. Amen. And he says, see, see Hebrews six ten. So let's go there to Hebrews six ten and read that passage. Hebrews six ten. All right. Let's see here six ten. It says. For God is not uh, unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed to uh, toward his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints, and do minister. Amen. So, everybody's gift and job in the church house is important. Amen. So, if you don't think that you're important, well, you are. And so, praise the Lord for you. And, uh, amen. All right, so everybody has a job to do in the church for the Lord and for other believers. So uh, don't think that your uh, work is gone unnoticed because God notices it, even if nobody else does. And uh, thank you for the work you do. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let's make sure we don't uh, start uh, thinking that our work's not important uh, around the church house. Amen. Because it sure is, even if it's just a little thing. All right, so... Because uh, without you, um, the church would not be able to function. So we're all important to God and to fellow believers. So let's make sure we do what uh, God has us to do. Amen. Even if it's just something little like taking out the trash. Amen. <laughs> all right. So that's the end of the topic for the Baptist Bread devotional. And I was looking at the devotional for the other book um, that I read um, here. It's titled Boots on the Ground. And... It's titled, uh, Daily Devotions for the Christian Soldier, and today's looked like another good one, so I figured I'd read you today's, and looks like it has to do a little bit with salvation. All right, so this is a devotion from the other book, uh, Boots on the Ground, so it's titled Closed Door, and this took place on the 12th of November in 1954, and the passage is from Genesis 6, 16. All right, so let's see here, it says... A widow uh, shalt uh, thou, oh, excuse me, a window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with uh, lower, second, and third uh, stories shalt thou make it. Genesis six sixteen. All right, so. Take my glasses here for a minute because it's hard to see. These little words are kind of small. All right, so this uh, topic here on the closed door, which took place on 12, uh, the 12th of November, 1954, it says, uh, Ellis Island is famous for many region reasons, not the least of which is that during World War II, it served as a hospital for wounded soldiers, a detention center, and a Coast Guard training facility Better known as the Gateway to America, the one the once famous immigration center closed its doors on the 12, uh, 12 November 1954 after having legally processed some 12 million immigrants since 1892. Wow. Uh, while other legal uh, means now exist to enter America, Ellis Island has forever shut its doors to those seeking to immigrate uh, to the U.S. While a door, an opportunity of salvation remains open in this age of grace, there is coming a day when it will be shut, right? Sure will. One day it will be shut. There won't be another chance to be saved. When God instructed Noah to build the ark, he specified that there was to be only one door, and once that door was shut, no one else was getting onto the ark. However, in his mercy, praise God for his mercy, 
God delayed his judgment and commissioned Noah to preach a message of repentance for 120 years. Uh, Genesis 6-3, which uh, I'm not really sure if he really preached for 120 years. Um, anyway, let's, uh, so I'm not, not sure, too sure about that. Uh, Genesis 6-3 three, three is uh, the reference there. Anyway, um, continue on. It says, During this period of forbearance, all someone had to do was to enter the door, and they uh, would be spared. The Lord Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. Uh, we not only have the blessed opportunity of eternal life in heaven, but also to show others the way. Amen. So let's show others the way. Perhaps you've never had the courage to give someone the gospel. Ask God for boldness. If you struggle with nervousness, you are in good company. Paul the Apostle asked the Ephesians to pray for him to be a bold soul winner. Ephesians 6.19 uh, Many, or excuse me, maybe no one has responded lately to your gospel witness. Even the most faithful soul winners encounter those seasons. Continue telling others that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14.6 Remember, God promises we will reap as we continue to sow. Galatians 6.9 Amen. So, uh, make sure we get out there and go tell somebody about Jesus. And get nervous. Um, just pray. Uh, that God will give you boldness, and you can always just uh, get nervous, go hand somebody a gospel track, and say, here's some good news about Jesus, or go out and hold a sign. Amen. So, many different ways to uh, go out and witness to somebody. Praise the Lord. All right, so make sure you get saved today, because you never know when that door is going to shut, and then your opportunity to be saved and have eternal life and spend eternity with Jesus uh, will end. So make sure you get that Settle today in your heart. All right, so that was the uh, end of the other devotion from this other devotional book, Boots on the Ground, written by Randy Wells. Pretty good um, messages in there. All right, so now I'll go ahead and get into today's hymn and hymn story, and this is a good hymn. I like this one a lot. This one's good. Um, it's uh, titled Christ Arose. <clears throat> All right, so it was written by... Robert uh, Lowry. It was written in 1874. All right, so it has uh, um, first the stanzas. Uh, they're a little um, slower in singing, and then when you get into the chorus, then we do a little bit upbeat here. <clears throat> so let me see if I can try to do this a cappella. <clears throat> Low in the grave he lay. Jesus, my Savior, waiting the coming day. Jesus, my Lord, up from the grave he arose with the mighty triumph over his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Vainly they watched his bed, Jesus my Savior. Vainly they seal the dead, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose, with the mighty triumph over his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose. Hallelujah, Christ arose. Death cannot keep his prey, Jesus my Savior. He tore the bars away, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose, with the mighty triumph over his foes. 
He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Amen. I like that uh, hymn there. Praise the Lord. All right, so that's the end of the hymn, Christ Arose, and now I'll read you the hymn story here. It's written in 1874, and the passage is from Luke 24, 6. So, grab my Bible here and open up to Luke 24, verse 6. Luke 24, in verse 6. All right, 24, 6 here. Let's see. Uh, so, this is uh, talking about, uh, let's see here, who is this? Uh, this is when they um, went to the sepulcher, and... Uh, then they saw the angels there, and uh, the angel said, um, and as they were afraid and bowed their down their faces to the earth, uh, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you uh, when he was yet in Galilee. Amen. Saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified. And the third day, rise again. Amen. And so he is risen from the from the grave and seated at the right hand of God the Father. Amen. Waiting to make intercession for us. All right. So that was the um, passage there, Luke 20, 24, 6. And I'll read you some other passages so you get the um, context of what was going on. All right. So I'll get into the hymn story here now for Christ Arose. All right. So it says... Uh, what can be, or excuse me, what can exhausted pastors do to relax on Sunday nights after a hard day's work? Baptist preacher Robert Lowry went home to his uh, wife and three sons and wrote hymns. Dr. Lowry will continue to preach the gospel in his hymns long after his sermons have been forgotten. Iris Sankey once wrote, Many of his hymns were written after the Sunday evening service when his body was weary, but his mind refused to rest. Robert Lowry was born in Pennsylvania in 1826. At his conversion at age 17, he joined the Baptist Church. Shortly afterward, he enrolled at the University of Lewisburg, now uh, Bucknell University in uh, Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. After graduating, he pastored churches in New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. He also taught at Buck Bucknell at, um, and at one time served as its chancellor. Lowry gained a reputation for keen biblical scholarship and powerful pic picturesque preaching. When gospel song editor William Bradbury died in 1868, Lowry was chosen to replace him as a publisher of Sunday School Music. His, he's best known, however, for his own gospel songs, including Nothing But the Blood, Words of Music, Shall We Gather at the River, Words of Music, uh, Where Is My Wandering Boy Tonight, Words of Music, All the Way My Savior Leads Me, Music, I Need Thee Every Hour, Music, and Marching to Zion, Music. Music, uh, with me, has been a side issue, he once said. I would rather preach a gospel sermon to an appreciative audience than write a hymn. I have always looked upon myself as a preacher and felt a sort of uh, depreciation when I began to be known more as a composer. This hymn, Christ Arose, was written one evening during the Easter season of 1874 while Lowry was engaged in his devotions. Second, uh, so while he was engaged in his devotions, he became deeply impressed with Luke twenty-four six to eight, especially the words of the angel at the tomb of uh, Christ. And then, why do you, why why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Amen. The words in music began forming together in his mind, going to the little pump organ in his home. Lowry soon completed what was to become one of our greatest resurrection hymns. Amen. And 
What a good resurrection hymn it is. Christ arose. Hallelujah. Christ arose. <clears throat> Amen. All right, so that's the end of today's hymn and hymn story. And tomorrow's hymn and hymn story will be from the hymn To God Be the Glory, written by Fanny J. Crosby and William H. Doan. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I I forget how to pronounce that again. Uh, Doan. Hey, um, so, and it's written in 1875. And the passage is from Psalm 108, verse 5. So that will be tomorrow's hymn and hymn story. To God be the glory. Amen. Another good one. All right, so that's the end of today's hymn and hymn story. And now we'll go ahead and sing some scripture songs before I wrap it up. And we'll go back to yesterday's and sing yesterday's and then conclude with today's. So yesterday was the 11th and John 6, 33 through 35 is the passage. <clears throat> Amen. John 6, 33 through 35. For the, For the bread, bread of God, God is he, which cometh down from heaven, and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life, and that cometh unto me never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Amen. That's right. For the bread of God is he, which cometh down from heaven, and life unto the world. For the bread of God is he, which cometh down from heaven, and giveth life unto the world. Said they unto him, Lord, evermore, Give us this bread. Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Unto him, Evermore, give us this bread. Oh, God is He, come it Give us this bread. Amen. All right, now we'll conclude with today's First Samuel, Samuel sixteen seven. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeketh not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Amen. Alright, here we go. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him, for the Lord see it not as man seeth, for man looketh on the out word appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth, but the Lord looketh on the heart, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth, but the Lord looketh on the heart. The Lord seeth not as man seeth, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Amen. That's right. He sure does. So let's make sure that our heart is right. And amen. All right, so that'll be it for today's broadcast. Uh, before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then tomorrow's topic for the 
Baptist Spread Devotional, and tomorrow is the 13th, and we're singing Psalms 150, verse 6. It says, Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. So that's tomorrow's scripture song. And then tomorrow's topic will be titled, Are Wise Sayings Always Wise? Question mark. So are wise sayings always wise? That will be tomorrow's path, uh, scripture uh, devotional. Uh, topic and then the passage is from Proverbs fifteen two, so uh, hope you come back tomorrow for that, amen. And so that's um, the, the devotional topic, and then tomorrow's hymn and hymn story will be from the hymn to God be the glory, amen. And then the book here uh, with these hymn and hymn stories is titled Then uh, Sings My Soul, Book Two, and one hundred fifty of the world's greatest hymn stories. Written by Robert J. Morgan, and you can find that on the internet or at your local bookstore. And there's four books to that uh, series. Amen. And then the scripture song book and the CDs are available on Brother Dean and Sister Patty's website at www.dailyscripturesongs.com. And then finally, the Baptist Bread Devotional book, and uh, they come in a box of ten, and you can order these. They come to you every other month. So if you order now, you'll probably get the ones for... November and December, and that's uh, through the website here at www.timgreenministries.org. Amen. So that's uh, all that information, and uh, praise the Lord for uh, those men that have uh, written these devotionals, and for Brother Dean and Sister Patty that put these uh, scripture songs together, and uh, praise the Lord, they're uh, getting ready to head back to Guyana here uh, at the end of the month now, so pray pray for that, pray that the, uh, they'll... Um, approve their medical exemption papers and stuff, and they can get back over there full-time. Amen. And um, praise the Lord, he uh, is uh, in charge of all that. So keep praying to that uh, end, and uh, pray for all missionaries around the world. And you too can be a bold witness missionary in your own backyard by going out and telling somebody about Jesus, uh, either in your neighborhood or down the street. Go hold a gospel sign or go out and hand out gospel tracts or find an event to go to, uh, lots of different ways to go get the gospel out, amen, so let's get out there and uh, go get the gospel to every creature, amen, preach the word to every creature, amen. Alright, so that's the end of today's uh, broadcast, and Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow to give you tomorrow's uh, devotional and um, all that, so uh, until then, may the Lord richly bless you, and hope you'll have a great and rest of your day, uh, be full of God's but blessings and goodness. Amen. All right. See you all next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.